everyone, and welcome to today's webinar titled Advancing RSV Research, Expanding Therapeutic Options with Recumbent Antibodies and Antigens. This presentation is a part of the ninth annual event in the Microbiology Week virtual event series. I am Kaylee Bach of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and sponsored by SinoBiological. For more information about SinoBiological, go to www.sinobiological.com. Before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you first to participate by communicating with other attendees using our live chat feature during the presentation. You can find the live chat located at the left of your screen. You can also participate by submitting as many questions as you would like during the presentation to do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Submit. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. If you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, click on the Help Desk button from the lobby within the event. Finally, as a reminder, this presentation is educational and offers free continuing education credits. Click on the Continuing Education Credits icon located on the far right of your screen and follow the process to obtain your credits. Now let's get started. I now present today's speaker, Mohamed S. Sefierian, Associate Product Manager at SinoBiological. For a complete biography on our speaker, the presenter tab is located on the left of your screen. Mohamed, you may now begin your presentation. Good morning, um, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mohamed Safiarian. I'm a biochemist and an associate product manager at Sino Biological. Today, I'd like to talk about the RSV or respiratory syncytial virus, uh, its background spread as well as therapeutic options, recent developments, and the Sino Biological contribution to the research in the field. Um, Respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV, is an important topic in healthcare and public health. Um, in this presentation, we'll go over various aspects of RSV infection, exploring treatment options, advancements in vaccine development, um, the cytokine release uh, following vaccination, potential future directions for RSV treatment, and the notable contributions of Sinobiological in supporting RSV research. So let's begin at this talk, starting with a brief overview of the RSV infection. As the name implies, respiratory syncytial virus is a respiratory pathogen and it affects individuals of all ages. It typically causes mild cold symptoms. However, in vulnerable populations like infants, the elderly and immunocompromised individuals, it can lead to a more severe condition such as bronchiolitis or pneumonia. Um, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, each year in the USA alone, RSV causes more than 58,000 hospitalization of children under the age of five and 177,000 hospitalization of older adults aged 65 or more. Um, in older adults, it's even more serious because more than 13,000 cases are estimated to be fatal. Um, this highlights the importance of the development of newer diagnostics, therapeutic tools for RSV. Um, RSV is primarily transmitted through saliva or mucus droplets. It leads to symptoms like fever, cold, and chest tightness um, that they appear three to seven days after the infection. Um, the damage to the airways is caused primarily by the immune response rather than the viral lab replication. RSV infects respiratory epithelial cells, or AECs, and inhibits the production of interferon gamma, compromising the antiviral immune response. Uh, severe RSV disease is associated with an inadequate immune response and low viral load. Um, secondary bacterial infections are a concern as damaged airways during RSV infection become more vulnerable to bacterial colonization. Um, let's explore the key antigens and their functions in both diagnosis and vaccine development. Um, RSV um, is a polymorphic negative sense, single-stranded RNA virus. RSVs are classified into two major groups, group A and group B. 
based on uh, antigenic differences in the G glycoprotein. Although both strains uh, often uh, co-circulate, only one predominantly causes infections in a specific period. Um, the RSV uh, RNA encodes 11 proteins. The virus has two transmembrane glycoproteins that are involved in viral entry into the cells, uh, which are uh, G glycoprotein, as I mentioned previously, also called attachment protein, and the fusion or F glycoprotein. Um, gly these glycoproteins are involved in binding to the cell surface uh, and uh, fusion to the uh, cell membrane. Um, in addition to the F and G glycoproteins that I mentioned earlier, there are more proteins, including large or L protein, nucleocapsid or N, phosphoprotein or P, uh, matrix M, and also non-structural proteins, NS1 and NS2. Uh, most vaccines and um, antiviral uh, drugs uh, target the fusion or F glycoprotein. However, G glycoprotein is less frequently used in um, RSV vaccine development because of its highly variable characteristics. Um, Sinobiologicals RSV reagents um, have been used in preclinical studies, clinical trials, and quality control sessions during the development of the RSV vaccines, including vaccine content testing, vac vaccine efficacy, and toxicology research. RSV enters the host cells through the binding of its surface proteins, as I mentioned previously, mainly G and F proteins to the host cell receptors. The G protein interacts with the host cell adhesion molecules like annexin-2 and heparin sulfate uh, protoglycans, uh, uh, HSPG for short, uh, to promote infection, CX3C chemokine receptor 1 or CX3CR1, and epidermal growth factor receptor or EGFR also play roles in facilitating RSV entry. The F protein binds in receptors like Tolreich receptor 4 or TLR4, intercellular adhesion molecule 1 or ICAM1, and nucleolin or NCL to mediate viral fusion with the host cell membrane. RSV entry involve endocytic mechanisms, including activation of ATPA, ATP1A1 and EGFR, leading to actin uh, rearrangement and macropinocytosis. In addition, insulin-like growth factor 1, or IGF-1R, has been identified as a no novel receptor for RSV entry, these interactions and signaling cascades enable the RSV to infect host cells efficiently. Accurate diagnosis and effective prevention and appropriate treatment are key aspects in combating RSV infection. Let's explore these aspects further. Diagnosing RSV involves various methods, including antigen detection, virus isolation, RT-PCR, immunofluorescence assays, and rapid molecular assays. These diagnostic tools help healthcare professionals identify the presence of influenza viruses and determine the specific viral strain causing the infection. Accurate diagnosis is crucial for timely intervention and appropriate management. Um, prevention is undoubtedly the most effective approach to combat RSV. In early April of 2022, Pfizer announced a $525 million acquisition of the ReVirals novel therapy for respiratory syncytial virus. Since then, RSV therapies have uh, garnered renewed global attention. Therapies for RSV infection uh, have been uh, studied since 1960s, and on May 3rd, 2023, the first uh, RSV vaccine, Arexv, was approved by the FDA for the individuals 60 years of age and older, which is a milestone. Um, treatment for mild cases include supportive care. This includes maintaining hydration, controlling fever, and ensuring proper rest uh, to aid recovery. Antiviral medications such as rebovirin can be used in severe cases of RSV. However, its use in limited, is limited due to the potential side effects and the lack of clear evidence for efficacy. In recent years, monoclonal antibodies have emerged as a promising treatment option for severe RSV infections. 
These antibodies specifically target RSV, helping to neutralize the virus and support the patient's immune response. Now let's talk about the treatment options for the RSV infections. <clears throat> First treatment options are monoclonal antibodies, which are the most effective treatment for RSV infection. Uh, Pelivizumab, or Synagis, uh, is a recombinant humanized monoclonal immunoglobulin, which was approved in 1998 uh, for RSV prophylaxis in high-risk groups. Uh, it works by targeting the RSVF, or fusion protein, and preventing viral entry into the host cells. Uh, palivizumab is particularly recommended for premature infants and children with underlying health conditions. Um, the other one is uh, Bayfortis with the generic name of Nirzavimab, uh, which is recently approved and represents a promising treatment for preventing severe RSVs in neonates, infants, and vulnerable children up to two years old. Uh, now let's move on to other treatment options. Uh, other treatment options include antivirals, such as ribavirin, uh, which is a broad spectrum nucleoside analog that effectively inhibits the replication of both DNA and RNA viruses, including RSV, and is often administered with uh, a uh, inhalation or intravenous uh, routes. Um, uh, Rebovirin has been used as a treatment option for severe RSV infections, especially in high-risk patients. Uh, IVIG, um, or um, intravenous polyclonal immunoglobulin, is a treatment option studied for acute RSV infections. It involves administering pooled immunoglobulins from donors with high levels of RSV-specific antibodies. RSV IVIG has uh, demonstrated a strong neutralizing effect against RSV and may be considered in specific cases. So um, next, I'm going to talk about the development and application of RSV vaccines. Uh, but before that, I'd like to point out that the major breakthrough from the National Institute of Health in mapping the structure of RSV protein significantly changed the game in, in um, RSV vaccine development because it allows companies to leap into the RSV drug research with better efficacy results. Uh, major pharmaceutical players such as Pfizer, GSK, Moderna, AstraZeneca, and Sanofi, and more have taken on the task of developing effective vaccines or prophylactic antibody uh, antibodies against uh, against the RSV. In the last decade, especially there has been a significant increase in the number of trials assessing different RSV vaccine uh, strategies. Um, advances in understanding RSV's pathogenesis and immunopathology have led to new uh, prevention approaches. These uh, include passive immunization with monoclonal antibodies, or maternal vaccination and active immunization using various vaccine types. Uh, current vaccine candidates target RSV surface proteins, particularly the prefusion F protein, which induces potent neutralizing antibodies. Um, different vaccines categories include recombinant vector-based nucleic acid and protein-based vaccines. Also, live attenuated vaccines and chimeric live virus vaccines uh, show promise in generating potent uh, immune response. Uh, now let's briefly discuss uh, different types of vaccines. So uh, protein-based vaccines, uh, for example, use purified viral proteins such as F and G glycoproteins of RSV, which stimulate an immune response. Uh, the purified proteins are often combined with adjuvants to enhance the immune response and improve vaccine efficacy. Uh, there are live attenuated vaccines, uh, which are basically weakened forms of the RSV virus that still can replicate in the body but do not cause a severe illness. Um, they mimic natural infection. They lead to strong and long-lasting immune response. However, there are safety concerns, especially for high-risk populations, uh, such uh, as, um, as there is a risk of attenuated virus reverting to a, to a virulent form and, and, and cause a severe uh, disease. Recombinant vector-based vaccines um, 
uh, they are um, basically harmless viruses uh, or bacteria to uh, deliver genetic material from RSV expressing key viral proteins in the body. Uh, the vector acts as a carrier uh, triggering an immune response against uh, RSV without causing the disease itself. Um, another type of vaccines are nucleic acid-based vaccines, uh, such as mRNA vaccines that uh, they're used to deliver genetic in uh, instructions to the body cells to produce specific RSV proteins. Uh, the RSV proteins later will prompt an immune response without introducing the whole virus. mRNA vaccines have shown promising results in recent years. And as a lot of you guys remember, uh, most famous COVID-19 vaccines from uh, Pfizer and from Moderna uh, were based on the mRNA technology. Um, each of these approaches has its own advantage and disadvantages. Uh, researchers are continuously working to develop safe and effective RSV vaccines to protect individuals, especially vulnerable populations. Um, so these are the most recent advancements in the vaccine development. Uh, two vaccines were approved in 2023, 10 years after the mapping of the RSV was published by the NIH. Uh, Araxvi by GSK is approved for immunizing adults over the age of 60, and Abrisvo by Pfizer for the infants. And both are highly effective in preventing RSV infections. Um, so, so far we know that there are several strategies to combat and to prevent the RSV. Um, and this variation in the RSV drug pipeline has raised the question of which form of treatment is more effective or accessible for each patient. For example, maternal immunization, where an expectant mother is immunized with a vaccine, may not be effective for infants born prematurely. Uh, in those cases, healthcare providers may give uh, preferential recommendations to monoclonal antibodies. Similarly, vaccines may be less suitable for immunocompromised individuals, uh, while immunization and some pediatric RSV uh, drug costs are expected to be covered by Medicaid, which uh, finances over 40% of births in the US, especially considering the requirements outlined in the 2022 Inflation Reduction Act. However, for old people, without new legislation affirming the informants of RSV vaccination, it's likely that a vaccine would require a lot of pocket expenses. Therefore, for vulnerable older patients, the affordability of the drug may become a major factor. Um, these are just a few factors. So uh, such factors may be considered by the CDC Advisory Committee on the Immunization Practices, or ACIP, uh, in their decision-making process for reimbursement and market access. Um, as we strive to ensure the safety and efficacy of vaccines, monitoring the immune response uh, that the vaccines uh, elicit uh, is very important. One crucial aspect of this monitoring is examining cytokine release in response to vaccination, which is important both in determining the efficacy and safety of the vaccine. Um, as I just mentioned, monitoring cytokine release is an essential component of vaccine development. Um, and administration of the vaccine um, usually uh, stimulates the immune system to generate a protective response. As part of this response, immune cells uh, recognize the vaccine antigens and produce cytokines that act as messengers, um, and they orchestrate uh, and fine tune the immune reaction. Uh, this is why monitoring cytokine levels is a critical aspect of, of vaccine development and evaluation. Um, by carefully assessing cytokine profiles, vaccine development content, uh, companies can gain insight into the immune response and the effectiveness and safety of the vaccine. Um, here you can see examples of the cytokines that are released after immunization with RSV vaccine. You can see that interferon gamma, TNF-alpha, interleukin-2 and 10, um, as well as interleukin-1 uh, 
um, four, 17 and 27, interleukin six are released in response to the vaccines. As mentioned in previous slides, the level of specific cytokines can serve as a valuable marker for assessing vaccine efficacy and safety. In this section, we will explore some key cytokines and um, their roles as markers of vaccine efficacy. Um, laboratory assays such as ELISA are commonly used uh, to measure cytokine levels in the blood or other biological samples. Um, these assays uh, use antibodies against cytokines and can detect the presence and concentration of specific cytokines such as IL-2, IL-4, IL-6, interferon gamma, and tumor necrosis factor alpha. Uh, for example, um, increased IL-2 levels following vaccination can indicate successful T-cell activation, suggesting a robust cellular immune response, or elevated IL-4 can indicate effective B-cell activation, implying a potent antibody response following the vaccination, and um, so on and so forth. You can see other examples in this slide. Uh, for example, TNF-alpha is a macrophage uh, activation marker, and so on. Now let's talk about the future directions for RSV treatment. Um, future challenges for RSV treatment include finding an alternative for ribavirin, uh, mostly because of its cost and the route of administration, which is mostly using nebulizer, is very difficult to administer to uh, newborns and also the, the elderly. For, for the treatment, uh, there is a challenge to finding an alternative. Mostly um, monoclonal antibodies are being used, which have their own drawbacks. Uh, most antivirals I should mention are developed against the F protein. And this is the same protein that the vaccines are, are developed against it. Um, the challenges associated with the development of the vaccine include stringent safety standards, which um, slows down the, the, the release of the new vaccine into the market, uh, especially for infants and and pregnant women. This slides are demonstrates the targets of antiviral agents in phase two or three of clinical development. As you can see, F uh, fusion protein, G attachment glycoprotein, L, which is large viral polymerase, M matrix protein, uh, and N nucleoprotein, T phospho uh, protein. Basically, all the proteins that we mentioned at the beginning of the talk are being targeted with various. Um, drug targets. So far, except for the F protein and G protein, all the other drug candidates have not uh, been successful. Um, Sinobiological has developed a comprehensive collection of RSV-related reagents for the viral research. We have 17 antigens, seven antibodies, more than 80 ELISA kits and cDNAs that cover RSVA and B uh, from over five strains. We have recombinant RSV antigens. We have, and also we have anti-RSV antibodies that I'll go over them in a second. Um, let me begin by introducing the Provir, which stands as a testament to our commitment to providing the scientific community with comprehensive and high quality viral antigens. We have over 1200 products encompassing more than 90 virus types and subtypes and more than 400 viral strains. And this extensive collection offers an unparalleled resource for studying a wide range of viral pathogens. The RSVF molecule, as I mentioned previously, fuses uh, viral and host cell membranes during the virus entry while uh, rearranging itself from meta stable prefusion to stable post-fusion confirmation. Um, antibodies that specifically bind to the prefusion confirmation of RSVF generally demonstrate the greatest neutralization potency. But as I mentioned, uh, RSV prefusion form is, is, is meta stable. Um, so the prefusion form of the RSV glycoprotein or PREF is a major target of potent virus neutralizing antibodies and a key vaccine antigen. Uh, for example, the investigational bivalent RSV PREF vaccine contains 
stabilize pre-F glycoproteins from two main co-circulating antigen subgroups, which are A and B. Um, Sinobiological has successfully produced HPLC verified and bioactive prefusion form of the RSVF that is a very valuable resource for vaccine manufacturers. There are some more recombinant RSV antigens, including uh, recombinant G proteins and F glycoproteins. We also have uh, nucleoproteins as well. So in addition to um, to the antigens, we offer specific antibodies against F and G antigens uh, to support uh, the research on the new uh, diagnostics and therapeutics for the RSV. Uh, our antibodies against RSV are monoclonal, which have several advantages over polyclonal antibodies. Um, they're more specific and they have higher uh, affinity for target antigens. They're also less likely to cross-react with other proteins and have less batch-to-batch -batch variability. We also offer uh, ELISA kits uh, for quantitative detection of the RSVF um, antigens, uh, as you can see here, as well as the RSV ELISA pair sets. And these are the standard curves for those um, uh, ELISA kits and the, and the antibody pair sets. Uh, as I previously mentioned, ELISA kits are used for uh, measuring the amounts of cytokines, such as TNF-alpha, IL-2, interferon gamma, and other cytokines, and they provide insight into the specific immune responses that are generated by the vaccine candidates. Um, Sinobiological offers a variety of validated ELISA kits and antibody pair sets uh, that are developed against the cytokines to monitor safety and efficacy of developed vaccines. There are some examples of the ELISA kits and the ELISA pair sets that you can see here. Um, with an extensive catalog, uh, we are a one-stop reagent and CRO service provider because we offer over um, 6,500 proteins, 14,000 antibodies, more than 47,000 genes, and more than 600 ELISA kits. Uh, we provide a diverse selection of tools to support your uh, research needs. Our vast collection of uh, bioreagents include various species, including human, mouse, rat, and more, which allows you to explore diverse biological systems and pathways. Um, from recombinant proteins to monoclonal antibodies, our high-quality products undergo rigorous testing and validation to ensure reliability and consistency. With our extensive portfolio, we aim to provide researchers with the necessary tools to advance scientific discovery and drive innovation in the field. Our CRO services are designed to support your research and development needs across various fields, including vaccine development. We also offer a range of services, including recombinant protein expression, recombinant antibody production, monoclonal antibody development, and polyclonal antibody development. Uh, with our expertise and the state-of-the-art facilities and equipment, we provide reliable and efficient solutions to accelerate your research project. As a global company, our reach extends to over 190 countries, and we have established a strong presence worldwide. We are committed to delivering high-quality products and services that meet the needs of researchers and scientists around the world. Our commitment to quality is evident in our ISO certifications. These certifications reflect our dedication to maintaining rigorous quality management systems to ensure the consistency and reliability of our products and services. We're proud to see our products cited over 11,000 publications as of June, 2023, and we appear in prestigious and high impact journals. This recognition demonstrates the trust and confidence that researchers have placed in our reagents and services. Uh, at Sino Biological, we have established a strong global presence with our headquarters located in Beijing, China. In addition to our main office, we have strategically placed branches in various cities within China to um, serve our customers. Uh, furthermore, we have expanded our reach internationally with branches in Tokyo, Frankfurt, Pennsylvania, and Texas. Uh, these locations enable us to provide efficient and reliable support 
to our customers worldwide. It uh, ensures prompt delivery of our high quality by reagents and comprehensive CRO services. With our global network, we are dedicated to facilitating scientific advancements and collaborations across borders. We would like to express our sincere gratitude for your time and attention today at Sino Biological. We, would, we are uh, dedicated to advancing scientific research and contributing to the global fight against infectious diseases. If you have any other questions or require additional information, or you would like to explore our offering in more detail, please don't hesitate to reach out to our team. Uh, we're here to assist you and provide tailored solutions to meet your research needs. Thank you once again for your participation and interest. Thank you, Mohammed, for your informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. All right, let's get started. We've got some great questions coming in from our audience here, so we'll start with this one. Mohammed, can you explain more about how RSV damages the airways primarily through the immune response instead of viral replication? Well, um, while RSV uh, does cause direct damage to the respiratory epithelial cells during the infection, it's important to note that the immune response that it triggers can lead to more severe damages. Uh, in some cases, the immune response becomes overly aggressive and can cause inflammation and damage to the airways. And this immune-mediated damage can result in symptoms such as bronchiolitis and pneumonia, which are often more significant contributors to the severity of the, of the RSV-related uh, illnesses. In other words, it's not the virus directly causing the inflammation, but it's actually the uh, triggering and over-aggressiveness of the immune system that causes more severe symptoms. Great, thank you. Now, Mohammed, you mentioned the challenges in developing RSV vaccines for infants and children. Could you provide some in insight into the ongoing efforts to overcome these challenges? Well, um, developing new vaccines for infants and, and children is especially challenging because of their developing immune systems and uh, there are a lot of uh, potential safety concerns involved. Uh, researchers in academia and industry, they're exploring various vaccine formulations and strategies, including uh, adding adjuvants to enhance the immune response. Um, uh, they're also studying maternal immunization. So one of the um, vaccines that we uh, discussed during the presentation was actually uh, recently approved by the FDA and it's administered to the expecting mothers to provide passive protection to the infants through antibodies transferred from the mother. Um, right now, as we speak, there are more clinical trials ongoing to determine the safety and efficacy of new approaches to, uh, to immunize infants uh, with, with the vaccination. Great, thank you. Another question we have here, are there any potential side effects associated with monoclonal antibody treatments like palivizumab or, or excuse me, and nisivirumab? So monoclonal antibodies in general, they can cause flu-like symptoms by, by, by triggering the immune system. Um, the monoclonal antibodies that you mentioned, like uh, palivizumab and nirsevimab, they're generally well tolerated. Uh, however, um, there are side effects, just like any other monoclonal antibody that can in include mild reaction at the injection site, fever or mild allergic reactions. Um, these side effects are usually manageable and they're temporary. Um, it's important for the healthcare providers to monitor the patients during and after the administration to address any adverse reactions very quickly. Great. And another question we have here, can you elaborate on the differences between the RSV A and B strains and how they affect infection patterns? Um, so, as we discussed during the talk, RSV A and B, um, they usually co-circulate and they're usually distinguished by their genetic differences, particularly in the G glycoprotein. Um, while both strains can cause similar symptoms, they can predominate uh, during different seasons and exhibit 
varying levels of severity. So in one season, for example, RSV A is dominant, in another season or another area, RSV B is, is the dominant uh, virus. Um, RSV A is uh, known to often associate with more severe disease, but both strains can go up and it can cause serious illness, especially in vulnerable populations such as elderly and, and infants. Great, thank you. And for the sake of time, it looks like we can ask one more question here. So we'll wrap up after this one. And this final question asks, you discussed the diverse approaches to RSV vaccine development. Could you explain which approach seems most promising in terms of balancing efficacy and safety? Um, well, each approach to RSV vaccine development, just like any other vaccine, has its own advantages and, and challenges. Uh, recombinant vector-based vaccines, nucleic acid-based vaccines, such as mRNA vaccines, similar to what we had during the COVID, and protein-based vaccines have shown promising results in, in early studies and clinical trials. Um, recombinant vaccines and, and mRNA vaccines have generated strong immune responses. Uh, however, protein-based vaccines offer a well-established approach, so meaning that we have more established uh, protocols and, 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 and methods in place to, to um, assess the, uh, the safety and efficacy. Uh, the approach that strikes the best balance between efficacy and safety will likely depend on ongoing trials and further research. All right. Well, Mohammed, thank you again. Before we close, do you have any final comments for our audience? If there is no more question, I would like to thank everyone for their time and attention, and I wish everyone have a great rest of the day. Great. Well, thank you again, Mohammed, for your time today and your important research. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. I'd also like to thank our sponsor, Sino Biological, for sponsoring today's webinar. Questions we did not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by our speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. This webcast can be viewed on demand for two years until September 7, 2025. Labberts will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. So until next time, goodbye.